We're here in the Pilan tent with your summer, the retinue advisor with the Pilan. Um, he's going to talk to us about uh, selective dry cow and dry, coming into drying off what farmers should be doing. I suppose you are. So we're coming into the period where farmers are looking at drying off cows. We're, we're heading into that period. So what kind of actions are farmers are doing now on farms or what should you be looking at heading into it? Well, I suppose we're now near the end of September. So we're, I'd say, six to eight weeks maybe away from really drying off. So with the new legislation that we have in place at the moment where antibiotics can be used as a blanket yeah. preventative treatment for any cow, we need evidence that cows have mastitis, that have a high cell count, in order for a vet to issue a prescription for the antibiotics to be used. Yeah. So the best thing you can do right now is book in a milk recording if you haven't done so already. If you're, if you're routinely milk recording, you have pente data there, make sure that you have another milk recording coming in. That's not gonna be older than 30 days by the time the cows are gonna be dried off, yeah. right? If the data is more stale than 30 days, they lose their value. But if you're not routinely milk recording at the moment, try and get one in near the end of this lactation. That will set you up really well for drying off now and give your, your vet the information they need to justify prescribing antibiotics. But it will also set you up for next year, continue the milk recording, and you'll be able to track how good your dry cow management is because you know what the cows were before you dried them off. Yeah. And you can see what they're like right after calving in the first milk recording then. Yeah. And then I suppose following on from that, it's planning ahead for the winter. Where are those animals gonna be housed? Have you enough cubicles for them? What sort of bedding have you for those cows? Because if cows are not all gonna have antibiotics, we need to make sure everything around them is very clean and that they don't have other underlying health issues that might push their immunity down a bit or make them more susceptible for disease. Yeah. So have a herd health plan, have a program in place that even looks at your vaccines and, and your parasite control. Tierlahan has launched a herd health program there that really sets out those things and it just helps the overall health of the animal. Yeah. I suppose in general, looking at the cows now, should we, what, what should farmers do? Should we obviously out body conditions for cows, maybe selecting cows that need to be dried off earlier? Um, is there anything else farmers should be looking out for now? What, there's a few things I would look out for. So I suppose you always have your troublesome cows. The cows that are always high in cell count, they are a source of infection for the other cows in the herd, for example. So it wouldn't be any harm to dry them off a bit early. Yeah. Just from the point of, uh, of you have taken them out of the herd as a, as a source of infection for the other animals, right? As yeah. soon as they're no longer being milked, they're no longer the source for other animals in the herd. So, and they then get a longer dry period, which gives them a, a, a higher chance of curing. Yeah. Um, any cows with lameness? Maybe it would benefit them as well to not have to do the walk every day, twice or four times. Yeah. Um, so maybe take them out as well and put them in a dry cow paddock if you can. Obviously, yields will, will determine if, yeah. whether you're on. And get a pregnancy diagnosis on the cows because then you will know more accurately when they're due to calf. And based on that, you can plan your, your dry off dates more accurately. Yeah. And I suppose, as you said, like there's a lot of key things to look at, but I suppose another key areas that you mentioned is lameness on farms and this time of year silage ground could be reintroduced to farms, cows are walking longer distances. So I suppose it's a good time as well to keep an eye on that and don't let cows go into the shed with a lameness issue. That's it. So if you can get your cows that maybe are a bit lame, that are limping a bit, get them seen to now so that they can recover before they go into the shed. Yeah. Because the shed in most herds, most farms, the shed isn't the most ideal situation, right? You have concrete, which isn't the softest on the feet. Yeah. Um, it's not as hygienic always as it would be outside. So if you get a chance to get those cows seen to now, a few weeks before they're due to go into the housing, they'll be fully recovered and fully um, able to, to cope with that not ideal environment yeah. of the housing. And yeah. so it's just in the housing then, it's also, if, if you haven't done so already, it's a good time to maybe look at the housing, look for any bits that are damaged mats, chip concrete, like get these prepared, get these fixed before they become an issue when the cows are in it. Any of the jobs that after last winter you thought I'll get I'll get around to them and you didn't over the summer, now is really the time to go and do them, fix the mats and so on. But also some herds might have not used any foot baths, for example, going back to the lameness. They might have used any foot baths all yeah. summer. Actually, where did the foot bath go? Yeah. Right? Pull that out again and have it in place that you can use it maybe even before the cows go in, or when once the cows are going in at night 
you can reintroduce footpaths, for example, and just keep the hygiene on their feet better, um, and, and, yeah. and, and that'll help with the lameness. the risk of infectious lameness is higher in the house. Absolutely. Here, where yeah. there's more feet going around, and yeah. more cows are in more uh, compact spaces. But so just one last question for you is, then, farmers who are da now dabbling in selective dry care this year, what's kind of their ideal cow they should be looking for when they're saying, this is the cow to test your select dry cow on or to do select dry cow on? Well, first of all, I would say it's a very herd specific decision, right? And, and that's why there is the whole TESA dry cow consult, a free consult with your vet who's done additional training. And I would say if you're interested in it, if you're eligible for it, please go down that route. And don't, you know, what I'll, what I'll say is quite generic. Yeah. Um, but if you are an eligible herd for this selected dry cow consult, you will have been notified by ICBF actually, because it is it applies to herds that are under 200,000 under bulk tanks. And then within those herds, the vets will go through the records of the milk recording to see which cows would be suitable for this herd. And no one is going to put a cutoff on this cell count level means a cow can or cannot get antibiotic, really, right? Because it is so herd specific. It depends on all the other factors around what other diseases are affecting the animals, what's the housing like, what's the overall dry cow management of these cows like, and that will determine where the level of cell count is placed. Yeah. And below that level, cows will not get an antibiotic. Yeah. So, so the, the key message there is it's not a one it's not, it's a, not one, a one one stop shop or, yeah. or, or a one solution for every for herd. Everyone. No, it's, it's a, a herd specific. Yeah. Herd specific. Talk with your vet, talk with your whoever you can about these. Yeah, talk to the farmers who have tried selecting what That's worked it. for them, what didn't work for yeah. them. I know it's all about it'll be, it'll be the first year for a lot of herds this yeah. year. And there have been some herds that have been doing it for three, four, five years, and they've gradually increased. And having dealt with those farmers in the past. What they would have done is they might have initially started with herds or cows that had a cell count of no higher than 50,000. Yeah. And the next year they went to 80,000 and they've gone to 100,000. And maybe they're now at a stage where they could actually say, well, a cow that has never been over 125,000 or 150,000, they feel confident they can dry off that cow with a teat sealer only yeah. and not use any antibiotic on that cow. But if this is the first year you're doing it, I would really avoid stepping in at the 150 as your first go at it. Do what you're comfortable with. And I would say use a small enough number of cows, especially on a single day, yeah. that you're really conscious of every step that you're doing, because if there's no antibiotics being used to dry off a cow, the last thing you want to do is introduce an infection into that cow at drying off and sealing that infection in there yeah. and doing more harm than good. So pick, pick your shore vets kind of Make sure that it's a day you're happy, you're not That's it. cranky, you're in a good mood, do them in small numbers. And That's it, your younger cows usually, you know, the ones that have nice looking teats that don't have any scar tissue or, or any damage to the teeth. That's sort of the things you need to look at, even though the cell count might be very good on some of the older cows, maybe their confirmation isn't that suitable yeah. for them to do this in your first year. Okay. Build your own confidence and go with it from there. And your vet will go with you on that journey. Yeah. As long as the vets can justify why they are prescribing antibiotics, it's okay, yeah. right? If an animal needs it, she's allowed to get the antibiotics. There's no issue with that. And just on, on the whole selecting cows in the process, there is AHI and Chagas farm events coming up in October, which I think if you're interested in selected drag therapy, as all of us should be this year, yeah. we should all attend these. Yeah. Thanks very much for talking to us today, Oris. No you. problem, Chris. Thanks.